Cool. So, so thank you for having the time for us. For Jazz and Code is the name of the blog, in case you're interested. I'm just curious to know if, um, you know, when you look at jazz and how jazz is progressing, and then you look at how technology is uh, defining how we live, how would you, as an artist, how would you um, create a generate a kind of passion for that for that particular audience for people that develop apps and develop technology all day long? Well, it, it's hard to spread the passion via uh, applied technology because I still think there's no substitution for going to see it live. When you see live music, when you can actually feel the energy coming off stage, you can see the musicians playing the instruments and hear the sounds that come out of it, there's no substitution for that. Mm -hmm. So unless we can develop some sort of technique that gets people out of the house mm -hmm. more, mm -hmm. um, you know, the challenge will always be there for uh, musicians, particularly jazz musicians, mm -hmm. to nurture uh, uh, new and younger audiences. Mm -hmm. We just got to get them out. Yeah. Well, you personally, as your career has just continued to rise, I've noticed that, and it's just wonderful. Have you noticed as an artist, when you look out into the audience, have you noticed any, any changes uh, in terms of who's coming to see your performances? Um, it depends on where it is. I mean, I think in general, jazz, uh, has a much more mature audience base. Mm -hmm. um, and that's only to be expected because the music is mature, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's uh, not saying that a 15 or 16 year old couldn't enjoy it because they could. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just how it's presented um, in the grand scheme of things. I think it's harder than ever, not just jazz musicians, but I think classical musicians have the same challenge. Uh, I think anyone who doesn't do pop music, um, I mean, even uh, rappers who are more positive and more cultured, shall we say, uh, they're not household names either, you know. So uh, I think an American pop culture is such a uh, is such a hard, static wall to break through, but it can be done, and it starts with people. Who appreciate the music? You telling me that wonderful story about your son. How old is your son? He's now sixteen. He's sixteen. You brought him yeah. to my show. Yeah. So I mean that that's how it begins. Yeah. yeah. You know? He's in a jazz band right now. Nice. Yes, he's now in the jazz band playing the drums. So nice. Um, I wanted to ask you. So um, no, that's that's a good point, and that's something that concerns me too. When I just think about. Um, what's popular and what people are listening to. Um, do you, and you mentioned uh, Latifah, I heard you mentioning her, which mm -hmm. is wonderful. And you're doing a lot of the collaboration with um, uh, artists that are, were originally like pop. Mm -hmm. And do you have, any, have you ever had any um, interactions with any rappers per se? Sure, Common has uh, oh, been yeah, a buddy of yeah, yeah, mine yeah. for a long oh, time. Yeah, right. uh, we haven't recorded together, okay. but uh, you know, when I first met him, it was a it was a shock because we we met in New York. Okay. Uh, this was right before uh, Like Water for Chocolate was released, oh, yeah, yeah. and uh, I was a fan of his already. I said, "Man, you know, you you're going to blow up." Yeah, right. <laughs> well, that was the understatement of the century. Right. But he said, "You know, you probably don't remember, but we actually met before. I used to come see you play in Chicago all the time." Oh. So I was like, "What?" You know, uh, I see Yasmin Bay all the time. We've okay. never had a chance to officially collaborate. Uh, Queen Latifah, as you mentioned earlier, yeah. you know, yeah. so, um, yeah. and, you know, Black Thought and Questlove, all my, all my right. boys from back home, That's right. you know, they, they don't count because we grew up together, right. so, you know, but uh, sure. I, I, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. Well, I want to talk about your, because I, I saw you in, I live in uh, Oakland Bay Area, Berkeley Bay Area, and I saw you last October at Yoshi's. Mm -hmm. And then I saw you, like I mentioned before, several years before that, at Yoshi's. Yeah. But your pianist, he is young. I mean, mm -hmm. he's just, and he's dynamic, and it's like he's an old soul. And so how did, how did that collaboration come about? Uh, Christian talented, Sands, you, you're mentioning. Yeah. Um, I first met him when he was 18. I was uh, sitting in for Marion McPartland as host for her mm -hmm. radio show, Piano Jazz. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, historically, that show was on the air for over 30 years, yeah. and she always had 
incredible artists on the show. You know, people from Mary Lou Williams to Dr. Billy Taylor to Hank mm -hmm. Jones to mm -hmm. McCoy Tyner, mm -hmm. Chick Corea, Herbie Hancock. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I, I subbed, I think, for four shows. Mm -hmm. And uh, I couldn't wait. I said, I'm going to get the interview and play with somebody cool. And she said, yeah, uh, I got an 18-year-old kid oh from gosh. Connecticut. <laughs> but at first, I was like, you know, really? You know. <laughs> right. But then I was like, okay, well, if he's on your show, he must be good. Right. And she said he's a protege of Dr. Billy Taylor. And then my eyebrow went up and said, really? Okay. okay. And he's also, uh, he spent some time studying with Hank Jones. Oh. I went, wait a minute. Now I started Now I started getting, I was mad at myself. I was like, well, how, how come did, I don't how know who know he is? That, right. Because right. <laughs> I've been deeply involved in jazz education for a while. But right. then when I heard him, uh, I said, whoa, mm -hmm. he, he is an old soul. Thank God mm -hmm. that he spent time around those grandmasters because it makes a difference, yeah. you know. Um, most jazz musicians are, you, you know, it's funny because people get so impressed by Christian because of his age, but I think it's more because of his size. Mm. Yeah, yeah, because it's a small stature. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. most jazz musicians usually start playing professionally when they're in their late teens or their That's early true. 20s, That's you know. True. Miles was 19 when he played with Charlie Parker. Yeah. Uh, Sonny Rollins was 17 when he made his yeah. first record. So I mean, it's, you know, no, nobody really enters the game as an old person. But Christian's different in the sense that, as point. you mentioned, he has an old soul. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's he's different from most he of is. his peers. Oh he gosh. carries himself with a certain sort of maturity and uh, uh, quiet confidence mm -hmm. that you don't find in too many uh, people in their mid 20s. Mm -hmm.